Welcome to WXTV, your source for energy efficiency and home performance. If you're renovating or remodeling a home, lead paint may be a concern. Disturbing lead-based paint can be a serious health hazard for both children and adults. The EPA and the Department of Energy both have rules regarding lead paint if you're working on a home or child-occupied facility built prior to 1978. We're standing next to one of our window props here at the training center to show you the ways you have available to test for lead. We'll be testing on this window that was removed by a homeowner during a renovation on their old home. The easiest and least expensive method to test for lead is using a chemical spot test. And the one that's been around the longest is lead check. These things are great. You make an incision, you swab the paint. If it's red, there's lead. Let's take a look at how it works. Before we take our test, we need to select the right spot. Now this has a fairly uniform painted surface, so it really won't matter where we take it here. But if you have thick and thin layers of paint, you wanna choose an area with the thickest layers on there to ensure that you're capturing all those lower layers of paint in your test. Before we make the incision, we want to make sure that the tool is clean so we don't have contamination from a prior test changing the results of this one. And we'll clean off the painted area we're going to test as well. To make the incision, the main thing is to hold your knife at an extreme angle. Uh, if you hold it like this, you're not going to expose a lot of surface area on those lower layers of paint. But holding it this way, you're getting a good amount of surface area to test. We'll make our cut, and you just need about a quarter of an inch all the way down to the substrate. And you can see that we've noted a few lower layers of paint there, and we've collected our chip in our bag. The lead check swab consists of two chemicals, a solid, and a liquid with directions right on the packaging. You simply crush A and crush B and then mix the two together. When you've finished mixing, you should have an amber colored liquid inside the vial. So to test, you squeeze a little bit of the liquid down into the tip and then you rub it on the incision for 30 seconds. Now I can see this starting to change a little bit already. And once we're done, we take a look at the tip and we can see that this is red, which means that we have lead. Now if the test was negative, it looked like the one that we have here. You can see the difference. This one hasn't changed color at all. If it is negative, you want to make sure that your chemical is working properly and the lead check system comes with a card to do just that. The test confirmation cards contain four spots of lead. You can see in those circles. And to test the quality of our chemical, we simply squeeze out a drop onto the card and check to see if that turns red. I can see it's already turning right before our eyes. Now, if we were careful placing that drop on our test confirmation card from our negative test, and we still have some chemical left in our vial, we can go ahead and quickly take another test with this one. Another chemical spot test recognized by EPA is D-Lead. Now, this one's a bit trickier to use. Basically, it involves taking a sample of our paint placing that sample inside this vial and adding five drops of a chemical reagent. We then shake it up and watch for the color change to see how dark it gets and compare it to this standard on the bottle. Let's take a sample. First step with any of these tests is to clean the tools, just inside and out here, and clean the surface that we're gonna test. We then can set up a catchment tray and the nice thing about these is that they have the directions right on there.
Sometimes the sample comes out with the tool and other times you just have to kind of pop it out and make sure you grab it all. We'll pull this off and work on the ground now. So we have our sample here and our clean razor blade. And to make this go a bit faster, we're gonna cut this into four different pieces. We'll take our clean razor blade and we'll cut this into at least four pieces. The more surface area you have, the better it is for the test. But you have to be very careful because brittle paint can kind of get all over the place. So we've got our four pieces here, and now we need to transfer those into solution number one. Pull the cap off. Be very careful as we tap those four pieces in there. I'm going to put the cap back on and shake for 10 seconds. Now we're ready to add the chemical reagent. is right here. We're going to do five drops of this. And cap it back up and shake for another 10 seconds. And we'll check it to see if it's starting to change. I can see it's a little bit dark, so that means there's probably some lead present, but we're looking to test it against this standard here that brown square you see on the vial. We're going to let this sit for 10 minutes. So we waited our 10 minutes. We're going to shake this again for another 10 seconds. And against a white background, clearly our solution is much lighter than the test standard, which tells us that this red paint we tested is not a leaded paint. A third option to test for lead is to cut out a paint chip sample and send it off to a laboratory for analysis. The process is fairly lab specific, so you'll need to already have a relationship with an NLLAP accredited laboratory prior to beginning the process. They'll provide you with the proper forms, containers, and instructions for collection and shipping. Your first step is to measure the area you're gonna sample. Most laboratories will require a one inch by one inch square, so we'll go ahead and do that. It's important to measure accurately and then record that measurement on your form. We'll go ahead and clean the area. If you're doing this step second, that's why it's nice to use a permanent marker. And with a clean knife, we'll carefully score along the perimeter of our square. And you can take a clean piece of paper and just roll it to make a funnel at one end, tape that shut, and we'll tape this up below our sample. Now comes the tricky part. You need to hold the container under here, hold your paper up at a bit of an angle, and we'll scrape out the paint only in the inside of this square. Now you don't want to get any of the substrate in there because it will dilute your sample at the lab. Here's our sample ready to head off to the lab. You'll always get a little bit of substrate in there as you can see, but the idea is to minimize that as much as possible. 
As you can see, this technique is a bit tedious, so you may want to give it some practice. Our final paint testing method is using an X-ray fluorescence or XRF gun. If your group has the resources to purchase or rent one, this is an excellent option. But keep in mind, you need an EPA lead inspector or lead risk assessor certification to use one. Without getting into too much detail, an XRF contains a radioactive element that allows you to detect exactly how much lead is in the surface you're gonna test. It's as simple as holding it up against that surface, pulling the trigger, and reading the number off the gun. That 7.5 is in milligrams per square centimeter, and the federal standard is 1.0. This is such a nice test because it's the only on-site quantitative test we have available for lead-based paint. So whether you're renovating, repairing, or painting, the first step is always to test.